Good morning. Welcome to TriVest Invest Wisely. My name is Martin Pelche. I'm a portfolio manager and family chief investment officer. Today I'm going to talk about framing and benchmarking and human behavior and how it influences investment returns and investment decisions. These are very important factors when considering the valuation of your investment portfolio. So um, the reason being is because what happens is we as people in human behavior is we look to what we know and we extrapolate that going forward. So our time horizons tend to be very short and we tend to look at what's, at what's happened over the last three years, maybe five years maximum and say, well, that's happened, that's going to continue to happen going forward and that creates a whole bunch of risk because, as you know, the world isn't linear and you can't extrapolate what's happened recently and uh, going forward. And so I'll give you an example of this. Let's take a look at a macro, micro le- a macro level, and then I'll take a look at a micro level. So the Bank of Canada, run by Stephen Polez. No different than the average investor. What they've been doing is they've been saying economic growth in Canada over the last two years is leading to G7. And we have pretty good uh, unemployment numbers in fact, um, I would even dare to say um, that they're hinting that uh, the growth is similar to the U.S., which is completely crazy and I, I completely disagree with. Having said that, okay, they're saying look at the economic growth, look at the numbers. Well, the last two years, yeah, the economic growth has been good. Let's expand our time horizon. The past two years, well, wait a minute here, we're just back to where we started from. So what I mean by that is we had the energy shock in 2014, mid-2014, and it hit the Canadian economy in 2015. Energy is a big contributor to GDP growth. A lot of the GDP growth we've seen in, has come from Alberta. And that has only been a recovery off the lows. So we've been recovering from uh, oil prices tanking and moving back up again. And so the big question is, can that continue to be the case going forward. Well, let's just wait a minute here. Let's pull up Canadian oil prices. We're getting a massive discount to uh, global pricing because we have no infrastructure. We can't export to new markets and and obtain the best pricing. As a result, more recently, Canadian oil prices have uh, trading at a a massive discount both across all grades. Now that some of that could come back, but the big question is, are we gonna see huge economic growth going forward from the energy sector, no, I don't see that going to be the case. There's other areas like housing um, that's starting to roll over. I won't get into it in this video. Having said that, big question is, is let's expand our time horizons. And is it repeatable? No. So there's a whole bunch of risk to the performance of the Canadian economy by an overly aggressive Bank of Canada. And uh, that is a big disappointment for us. Taking a look at... Um, the micro level for investors. Everyone's talking about new highs in the equity markets. Okay, what does that mean? Let's expand our time horizons. So if you're an investor in the Canadian equity markets in 2009, 2010, yeah, things are good. If you're an investor in June of 2008, not so good. Excluding dividends, just absolute return basis, you're flat maybe up 3% in total over the whole period. It's terrible. It's 10 years, of no returns. If you're an investor in European markets or uh, EFI markets, all developed markets outside of North America, okay? That's the rest of the world. Um, it's terrible. 25% below your 2008 highs. If you're an investor in emerging markets, it's even worse, 30% below your highs. The only market globally that is kicking butt is the U.S., now, hindsight's 2020. It would have been great to have a big U.S. waiting. But let's look at the 10 years prior to 2008. Canada kicked the U.S.'s butt. So if you do a 20-year period, Canada has actually outperformed or performed in line with um, the U.S. equity markets over a 20-year period. So time horizon is everything. And so the, what do you use to sh- extrapolate returns going forward? Well, you can't. What you have to do is you say, where is, their, where is their value opportunities? Sure, the U.S. economy is doing really well and outperforming most other economies. But is that reflected in valuations? The S&P 500 has six stocks that account for 17% of that index and 75% of the returns. And they're all technology stocks. Um, 
you look at Canada, you have some um, blue chip dividend paying companies with a 6% dividend. In Europe, um, the discount multiple in, in that market to the US is as wide as it's been in since 1970. Think about that, 25% discount on a Ford multiple basis. Maybe there's some opportunities there. So don't look, the point of what I'm saying here is, is don't look what's transpired over the last one or two years. Don't let the headline attentions, uh, headlines such as market signal highs steer you to where um, your investment decisions are going to be made. Be forward looking, not backwards. Thank you very much. Have yourself an awesome weekend, and we'll talk to you soon.